talk to you today about x-rays and why they're important, why we take them, how often we, we people generally take them and what the recommendations are, etc. And the different types too. And, yes, think. and the different types yes. of x-rays as well. Um, so every office is a little bit different in general. The office that Debbie and I work in specifically, we like to take x-rays once a year. And when I say x-rays, um, we take bite wings. Um, and we'll explain what that is. Um, and then like just general pro protocol in our office is that we take those once a year. We usually take something called an FMX, which is a full set of x-rays. We do that every three to five years, usually five years in our office. And then we alternate every five years between taking the full set of 18 specific individual films. And then we, the next time we do something called Panorex. And we'll explain what all that is. And then PAs, um, we take those every two to three years of implants, teeth with root canals, and I think that's it. Right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so do you want to explain what bite wings are? Sure. So the bite wings, when you go into the office and stuff, are typically the ones that they'll say, hey, we are due for x-rays, and they take two on each side. Um, one that's a little bit more forward and then one that's a little bit uh, further back. And the reason we take two on each side is that we want to have open contact. So we want to be able to see between each of those teeth. Um, and sometimes, you know, depending on the way that your teeth have come in, if there's crookedness and stuff, sometimes we have to take a few additional just so that we can get the open contacts. Um, the reason we need open contacts is for the dentist to be able to see between the teeth. She is looking for cavities. Um, any recurrent decay and stuff that's happening maybe under a crown or under a filling um, and she needs to be able to see clearly between those because she can't visually see in the mouth. Um, we'll show you kind of what that looks like here. So these are my personal x-rays and what the dentist is going to be looking for is you can see there's a little um, triangular area there that's a little bit darker this area right here so she's looking for that um, in this case, it has not broken through what's called the enamel. So you can see there's a line right here where this is a lot whiter and this is a lot um, more gray. So the inside here is the dentin, on the outside here is the enamel. So she, in our office, looks for this little gray triangle to break through that enamel before she'll start actually filling it. But this is the start of a cavity. It's called an incipient decay. Um, and then so that's what she's looking for there. So another thing that, uh, what? A hygienist would look for on an x-ray is something called bone loss. These are some x-rays that a personal friend of mine that I got consent for to show these to you guys. And we're looking for bone loss here. So you can see that the bone here is quite a bit further down. We would like it more up to here. So pretty close to where the enamel portion ends is where we're looking for that bone level to be at. So this person has lost bone all the way down to there. And that means that they're probably going to have some recession because they've lost the underlying structure um, that supports the gum tissue to have the gum tissue up here as well. So now some of this person's root structure is probably showing because of that. So some of the other things that a dentist is looking for, um, she's going to be looking for any overhangs, which we also look for that as well because if there's an overhang and what that means is that a filling was done and there's too much of that filling that is overhanging outside of the normal area of where the tooth should be um, and so when that overhang happens you get a lot of inflammation and stuff because it's just an area where bacteria harvest and stuff not harvest where the area where bacteria collect it's a little apartment complex for them they just love to multiply in that area and stuff. so she's going to be looking for those anything that she can smooth up or fix because that's going to cause inflammation and stuff which is what we deal with as a hygienist if there's a lot of inflammation and stuff there it may not be that you're not flossing well enough in that area, it just is an area that's collecting a lot more bacteria and stuff and that you can't keep it as clean as it should be because of that overhang. It can also cause decay because bacteria also causes decay, different kinds of bacteria, and we'll talk about more about that, but it also is a risk for decay, so that's another reason why she'd be looking for that too. True. Um, and then one other thing that we look for on the x-rays is how much calculus. So if we can visually see calculus, and then often people call this tartar, um, you can usually feel it on your lower front teeth if you regularly get the cleanings and you know that that area has a lot of buildup and stuff. We look for that also on the x-rays because you can have a lot of tartar buildup underneath the gum tissue too. So we'll show you that on an x-ray here. So here on this x-ray, this is just from a Google search, 
You can see these little spicules, triangles, wings, whatever you want to call them, off of the teeth. And that's a buildup of plaque beneath the gum line that has hardened into the tartar, which can only be removed with special tools and instruments. You're not going to be able to brush that off. But sometimes I joke with people like, Do you see that wing? If that leaves there too, or stays there too long and it grows, your tooth is going to fly away. <laughs> So then about every three to five years, it depends on the person. If they have a lot of decay and stuff, then we typically take x-rays more frequently so we can catch it sooner. Um, so every three to five years, we take a full series of x-rays. And what that includes is PAs, which are x-rays that show the roots of your teeth, um, all in the back and front, and then also includes those bite wings too. We'll show you a picture of that. So this is a full set of x-rays you can see there's individual PAs that show each of the roots of the teeth in the front and in the back, and then there's these bite wings that we showed you earlier. So again, we alternate every five years of taking this full set of x-rays between the FMX that we just showed you and something called a Panorex, which is this, which shows all the jaw line here. This is your, my spine that shows up twice just because everything's mirrored. But these are great to see if there's any cysts in the jaw. Um, and it shows the roots of the teeth, so infection um, that's showing by the roots would show on those as well. These are really bad for trying to diagnose cavities because they're not clear enough to see exactly what's going on between the teeth. So uh, just to recap everything, uh, most offices will want to take those bite wing images once a year, um, but it always depends on the patient. And nothing is cookie cutter. Nothing is like, okay, we have to do this because of this if everybody's treated the same. we decide and we diagnose and everything based on every patient. So typically we take those every um, year and then if you have any root canals, any crowns, well not crowns, but any root canals, any implants or anything like that, we're going to be wanting taking a picture of the PA that shows the root of the tooth and then every five years we're taking that full set of x-rays that show all the roots plus those bite wings or panorex plus bite wings to see between the teeth. Exactly. Um, I'd like to also mention that it depends on the office, but in our office we use what's called digital x-rays, so they're a they have a lot less radiation. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of people, especially in our area, are very concerned about how much radiation they're getting. Um, a good rule of thumb is about taking a full set of x-rays is very similar to riding in a plane. Um, of the amount of radiation that you get is very minimal um, and also just think it's really important to know that we need those x-rays to see the bone level to see how much buildup you have and stuff in order to give you an effective treatment um, some people will say like well can't we just do a regular cleaning without x-rays yes we can it's like possible but we're not going to be able to really give you a full service because we can't see what's going on under there we, our eyes don't look through your gums and stuff so we do need to see that to see the shape of your teeth so that we know how to clean those root surfaces and stuff um, it's just a very important tool for us that we use um, as well as for the doctor to diagnose different decay and stuff. And some people say, you know, to see is to know and to not see is to guess. And I don't, we don't want to guess about exactly. what's going on because a lot of times things are happening and you're not feeling it. Um, so it's just good to get everything and the precautionaries done because we do catch a lot of things that people aren't feeling exactly. and then we're going to prevent something bigger and more expensive from happening. Um, one rule that we do follow when we're taking x-rays is called ALARA, yes. which is um, as least amount of possible radiation as possible. I forgot how the acronym <laughs> works, but um, everybody that is drilled into our heads in school too. Um, so we are very cognizant of, we know we're using radiation and we want to make sure that we expose you the least amount as possible um, but we also need to be able to do our job effectively and make sure that we're not causing harm exactly well this is Janice and thank you all for watching okay guys Debbie is going to demonstrate just in case you've never had this done how an x-ray is placed and what happens okay here we go and bite together Ha, ha, ha.